This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. The last year has made you realize you don't really have any cool hobbies left, and it's time to check out Skillshare. They have tons of online courses to teach you new skills and hobbies from the best of the best. Want to learn photography, web development? Skillshare's got it. Follow the link in the description below. The first 1,000 people to click will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And after that, it's only $10 a month. But not yet. It's time to get to the synths. Camera rotates around the first victim and jump cuts a bunch in a Saw movie cliche. How does Jigsaw, or whomever is setting up these punishments, assure that the person won't pull the game's starting pin out when they're asleep? She's sitting up sleeping and you're telling me she didn't move forward once? Also, we make jokes sometimes about whether a said actor won a contest to be in said movie. However, in this case, Tanidra Howard literally won a reality show contest to be in this movie. She does a fine job, but since I actually get to be right about this for once, she's getting a sin. You recklessly loan people money. No their financial limitations. So I guess this is all the work of Hoffman, the new Jigsaw, and he's going after loan sharks? And he can only find two people to punish for that? None of this has any real connection to anything else in the movie. What's next? You sell pirated copies of Aragon to people at Burger Kings all across Queens. Your shameful bootlegs cost the movie industry an estimated $4.500 a year. However, only one of you may pass, and the toll is the ultimate sacrifice. If you're gonna make a game where the two contestants have to cut out more flesh than the other person, it's probably not terribly fair to pit a smaller woman versus a larger man. If she wins, she's clearly making the bigger sacrifice. This is a stupid game. Who will offer the most flesh in order to save their life? Also, the movies are officially so far away from morality tests and complex puzzles and have gone full on into torture for torture's sake with these traps. And yeah, yeah, Hoffman is the one behind this and not Jigsaw, so maybe that's a reasonable story-based answer, but it still doesn't help with having to sit through watching a man slice off his love handles. This woman is trying to cut her left arm off, and this dude is trying to cut pieces of his abdomen off. Eh, it's at times like these that I escape to my thinky place, where I remember Bruce Willis making the ultimate sacrifice at the end of Armageddon. It makes me proud of the human spirit, since that man dies with the knowledge that Die Hard isn't a Christmas movie. It's a welcome distraction for me until the carnage ends. Remember Cecil? I sinned Saw 5 seven months ago and I don't remember him. When he pops back up at the end of the movie for the payoff to this scene, I probably won't remember him. How the f*** did anyone keep up with what was going on in these movies when they were released a year apart? Did everyone bring their notes from the previous year to each showing? I ask your speculation strong. Previously on Saw. This would be the equivalent of a money shot in a Saw movie. I'd give all the sins back if we discovered the Saw series as a prequel to the Resident Evil series. The assets for one of history's most notorious serial killers, John Kramer. Convenient John Kramer news position is convenient and news positioning. Also, is the author of this book giving a report on an actual news program about John Kramer's real estate assets? Where the f*** is she? Who selects a background like this for a report like that? And it must be nice to be able to promote your book any damn place you please. <laughs> One more question. Who found the error on his application? The dog pit. They work as a team. We don't know about the dog pit and need an introduction to them, I guess. But Debbie would most certainly know about the dog pit. She doesn't need to ask about it. Found two application errors for a client we owe client. I mean, I always tell you every single new finding every time I find it, just so the audience can bathe in our unchecked stainery. Also, Eddie Winslow turned into a f***ing insurance investigator. That's all you need to know about how much family matters. Who will offer the most flesh in order to save their life? The choice is yours. Scene does not contain black sheep. Also, Hoffman keeps recording to this sh**. How has he not been caught yet? Hey man, it's like 2009. If you're gonna keep evidence of your murders around, why do you still use a reel-to-reel -reel tape player to listen to your torture porn? And why don't you have video? Can I do a retroactive She Survives This Sin from the previous film? Because I'm gonna. I thought Strom and Perez were FBI agents brought in specifically by Dina Meyer's character in Saw 4 to look into the Jigsaw murders. Why were they investigating the real estate scam? It had no bearing on a Jigsaw case until Saw 5. You were ruining people's lives. Awesome. Can we cut back to you and the other guy playing that Jigsaw game just as a reminder? Sweet. I had totally forgot. He wanted us to learn. And did you? Why would Hoffman ask this f***ing question? It makes him look suspicious as hell, and not once has Hoffman seemed to care about the lessons aspect of Jigsaw's crime. He tried to copycat Jigsaw for his own personal reasons, got caught, and was forced to pay off a debt to John. He's not Amanda. Look at my goddamn arm! What the f*** am I supposed to learn from this, huh? Probably learned not to scam people anymore, I'm guessing. 
It's an abhorrent way to teach you that lesson and I condemn it, but I'm guessing you won't scam anybody anymore. Kids. The skin abrasions, they're indicative of a knife with a partially serrated edge. All the other cuts were made with a near-perfect blade of surgical quality. They're about to inform Hoffman that his sister's killer, Seth Baxter, had the same cutout pattern on his body, which would obviously be a mistake that Hoffman made when cutting out the two puzzle pieces on these victims. However, in Saw 5, it is shown that Hoffman uses a surgical scalpel on Baxter, and not the knife with a serrated edge, as the medical examiner claims. The same knife was used in only one other victim. And that victim was Seth Baxter. You gotta love how Agent Perez knew to stop talking so that Erickson could finish her thoughts. These two have developed a dynamic rapport after he helped fake her death. You're telling me that you can tell a different knife was used from a photo? No, but I can. I was the one who examined that body. I've examined every victim of the Jigsaw Killer. Detective Hoffman, as a detective, should know shit like this. And if he's truly worried that they might catch him based on this kind of evidence, you'd think he would have kept the knives consistent on each victim. From now on, I work alone. How is that even possible? Hoffman has decided on a whim to start the game that night, and he still has to kidnap several people, set them up in traps, etc. Does traffic not exist in this city? Who's this? Unfinished business. Well, that should make him easy enough to look up and track down. Just look under you in the phone book. I brought proof that it works. Luckily, for dramatic purposes, you didn't see Amanda in here until I wanted you to see her. Kinda awesome you didn't need to come in here and check an email and ruin the surprise. The Jigsaw Killer may be dead, but the murders continue. And William gets kidnapped for his game shortly after the newscaster gives out the Jigsaw Omen. That's either some serious f***ing karma or it's conveniently stupid. Also, how lucky for Hoffman that William was working late on the night he decided to preemptively start the new game. What would Hoffman have done if William wasn't an asshole and instead went home to celebrate his sister's birthday? I mean, he probably would have still found a way to capture William, but he might also have gotten cake. And Hoffman doesn't deserve cake. Only closers get cake. Also, also, is every television channel in this city just reporters talking about Jigsaw 24-7? Is there ever, like, a Dodgers game on? Or a Law & Order SVU marathon? <laughs> the reason this happens is because the security guard saw someone in a pig costume running around the building. But instead of calling up to William to tell him there was danger, he went straight into the office and didn't announce himself when he walked inside with a hood that concealed his face. You know, for maximum confusion. Hello, William. I decided to record this VHS message in EP for maximum static. For years, your probability formula has decided the fate of others. The healthy have benefited, while the potentially sick have been unjustly rejected. From the beginning, there was so much clamoring for a Michael Moore-type film in this franchise. It was nice of James Wan and Lee Winnell to finally cave in on fan demands. I remember hashtag release the sicko saw trending. If you don't reach the end before the timer hits zero, you will never see your family again. But why did the timer start before John was finished explaining the rules? William lost valuable seconds because Jigsaw decided not to play fair. Sin on you, John. Sin on you. While only 52 years of age, this man has continued to smoke even though he has a history of high blood pressure and heart disease. This whole trap is set up so that we know William, the evil insurance guy, will get through the first three traps pretty easily. So it's pretty f***ed up that this trap is set up to kill off minor offenders of John's philosophy while the chief evil guy gets to survive. This is not John's M.O. If he wanted the guy to learn a lesson about smoking, he could have locked him in a closet and made him smoke a whole carton of them. Why does this guy get a punishment that is almost 100% guaranteed while the others get put to the test for far greater offenses? So I I ask you when faced with death, who will survive? The person who can hold their breath the longest? It's actually not that difficult of a question to answer. Who the hell is that? How does Hank not know who John Kramer is? It's the only goddamn thing they show on the television in this city. <laughs> like we really needed to see that shit. Yes, yes. These are the people I kidnapped, all right. The piece of paper that Pamela left with Jill is a copy of the letter that Hoffman used to blackmail Amanda, exposing her big secret of being with Cecil when he accidentally killed John and Jill's unborn child. Hoffman had no clue that Pamela or Jill had access to this letter, so how did he know he could capture Pamela outside Jill's apartment? Why does this whole process need a bulletin board? Do the death games work better if you have everyone's pictures organized? William sees the party written on his arm and immediately knows the exact party that's being referenced. I can't even figure out why John wants him to recall this party since he already went over what he considered to be William's crimes in the initial video. Good. Guy who obsessively watched Jigsaw coverage and just went through a death trap somehow thinks he has a choice not to play a game. According to your policy, your secretary is older and weaker. I'm not saying William is right to carry out his evil insurance policy, but she's middle-aged with diabetes and the other guy is young and perfectly healthy. This isn't according to policy, these are just facts. But you know the loss that she will be to her family, while young Alan will disappear without a blip on the world's radar. Leading the witness. Let the game begin. William just has to choose which person he wants to let live. This isn't a game, it's a choice. Oh, no, you're 
Saw 6 is as miserable of an experience as just about any film that has ever gotten a wide release. It's like the scene in Saw 5 where Julie Benz has to stick her hand in a moving saw blade stretched out for 90 minutes. You tried to find a way out of here, Addy. How the f*** is she even going to get off this platform? She has barbed wire wrapped around her neck. Unless they left a loose end, how do you get out of this? What if we put acid on the metal bars? It'll eat through the metal, won't it? Hey, but how are we going to get it on the bars? Huh? With our hands? Dick's on his dick. Jill flashes back to a time when she wasn't even in this room until later, giving us backstory about the rivalry between Amanda and Detective Hoffman that she couldn't possibly have witnessed. The device Timothy is strapped to is my personal favorite. I call it the rack. Torture device shoutouts. That's a human being. You gotta love how John doesn't realize his beliefs about life can easily be misinterpreted. I mean, think about the ramifications of a philosophy that is basically, yes, we are trapping people and making them go through extreme pain to escape, but also, you can't be an asshole about it. Oh, and also, some people will get a chance to redeem themselves, but others will have to rely on other assholes redeeming themselves to get out of the traps. <laughs> Those people are nothing. Anyway, come by the office later. I made a video about kidnappers and victims I think you'll enjoy after the mandatory film about workplace conduct. Bring a snack. Someone's here, test detective. I don't need one. John somehow knew I'd be a total prick as the dungeon master, and he saved his test for the sixth chapter of a film series that I can't possibly know about because I'm a character in that series. But that's how we're writing this in. You're still dragging your knuckles on the ground. I just realized this would constitute as flirting in the Saw universe. I'm not sure grease-gunned floor sex is a thing in the real world, but I might want to find out. Why is this boner? Here, this is how you close your hand. Why so cryptic with the arm writings? Why not just write the time you didn't approve my claim? Or don't write anything because none of these flashbacks matter. I've found a treatment for my cancer that I think holds a lot of promise. These movies keep manufacturing victims for John in a way that makes it unbelievable that so many people could be responsible for his demise. And they add even more to John's diagnosis in later movies, providing even more fodder to the torture factory. Maybe there should have been a moment when John stepped back and realized that everybody is an asshole and there's no hope for them. You can build life-affirming death traps all you want. People are dicks. Also, if this guy was the biggest dick of them all, why wasn't he one of the first victims? Two doctors who told him his cancer was inoperable went into his traps first. He made it seem like they were the true assholes of this story. But this guy is shown as the worst of the worst. And it takes six movies and John's death to get this guy into the game. It's a doctor in Norway. Now, we don't know much about him, but he'll be in some of my torture traps in Saw 9 because of something f***ed up he did. Get it all ass backwards here. John Kramer would be excellent at CinemaSins. Don't talk to me about money. I have money. This is about principle. Holy f***, did he just say he had the money to do this sh did he not do it because he'd lose his insurance? F***ing really? I thought his whole philosophy in this movie was what people will do to survive. Hello, William. You have seen the flaws in your policy. Every single time we get a flashback of John telling William something, we then get the present day where a recording of John is essentially telling William the same thing again. If you cut out the flashbacks and all the previously on bullshit, this movie would be 37 minutes long. When faced with death, will she have the skills to live? Why did the first two traps require someone's death to move on, but this one doesn't? Debbie has 90 seconds to survive this maze, so of course the movie gives her more than twice that amount. Uh, I guess this trap plays by soccer rules and their stoppage time for injuries. Also, movie takes 56 minutes and 33 seconds to properly saw six. I need that I know she has 20 seconds left, but how exactly does she figure to get the key in time by wildly swinging this saw at William? Sure, this is a desperate situation, but she should know by now the 20 seconds will be stretched out for another two minutes and she has plenty of time. Why? Why would someone do this? Earlier you told your son his father was responsible for the predicament you're currently in, so I feel like this has been asked and answered. This is all taking place in the Fairweather State, a state so proud of its history that it doesn't even put its own name on the license plate. As saw traps go, the carousel is one of the weakest of the franchise. Sure, carousels can be fun, but this two people live and four people die thing could have been done a number of creative ways. And in the end, it's a bunch of people getting killed with a shotgun. The only way someone survives this is if William decides to press the buttons when it's their turn and he gets his hand stabbed. whoop de doo I also think about the complexity of this trap and how long it must have taken to make it work. Hoffman had to set up a carousel that could automatically spin and stop on individuals, then line up a shotgun that could automatically fire or get pulled back at the last second depending on what William does. And Hoffman has been shown so far to be kinda lazy. So I don't really buy that he has the patience for shit like this. Your parents hate you, they cut you off! What? <laughs> you and him just sit next to you! Eavesdropping. He's been stealing from the company for years! This carousel thing goes on for like five minutes. It's a bunch of overlapping screaming and shouting by a bunch of loathsome characters trying to appeal to another loathsome character to save their lives. It's noisy and confusing, adapted from a headache the director's friend had in fifth grade. It's me, Josh! <laughs> this movie cuts back to Josh in the office holding a phone and thinks that's a memory that would be meaningful enough for William to make a decision. If this is the joke that the movie is making, well done. I'm sinning it regardless. <laughs>
Once again, how do these people get out of their restraints? Nothing happens to show the game letting them go. They survive the trap, but nothing releases them. You can turn his algorithm upside down and let us hear what he really sounds like. If it's that easy, then why hasn't she already figured it out? Hear that? Right now, you're, you're feeling helpless. helpless. We're getting there. Come on, I thought you had something to show us. I mean, yeah! The only reason why Hoffman is even here right now is because Perez and Erickson called him into the main office to tell him about a fingerprint with a trace of Freon on it. The analysis was incomplete, which means calling him in just for that was useless. Then, while he was there, the technician unscrambling the tape called Erickson and told him she was finished. So they asked Hoffman to tag along, since he was already with them. But somehow, the tech still has work to do, and it gives him a chance to kill all these people once they find out it's his voice on the tape. I'm not saying this sequence of events wouldn't have happened. I'm just saying the movie's reasons for Hoffman being at the lab right now are weak as f Listen, it's getting closer. This whole scene feels like a remake of the last broadcast, when the guy making the documentary is in the room with the woman cleaning up the video he found. On further analysis of Strom's fingerprints, it was found that the uric acid levels in the eccrine gland residue were inconsistent for an individual with an active epidural metabolism. This is a long way of saying Strom was dead when he left those fingerprints, but honestly, isn't this the kind of thing you could have told him about earlier? You called him in especially to tell him about f***ing Freon, but you didn't tell him about this huge clue until now? You might be thinking, well, they must suspect Hoffman, but nothing the FBI agents do in the scene suggests they're ready to pounce once the tech descrambles the voice on the tape. You'd think they'd be a lot more careful around him if they think he's behind all this. Also, I'm beginning to think Hoffman is a terrible detective. How would he not know about dead fingerprints? Why is Agent Perez shooting indiscriminately in the dark? Did she even get a clean look at Hoffman before she started firing away, if she didn't get stabbed right after this, I'd think she's in on it. Hoffman pulls out Strom's hand that he's been using to frame him with, which means the movie thinks it's perfectly natural to flash back to how he acquired that hand, which is something we already knew and don't really care about. Also, grabbing a detached hand from a corpse without gloves. <laughs> this f***er is still putting Strom's fingerprints on things, even after he was just told that they could figure out if the person was alive or dead when they left them. And he's gonna burn this place down anyway. This guy is the dumbest mother ever. I'm adding lots of sins. <laughs> Gaslighting. Jill strolls into Hoffman's lair without a care in the world. Kind of makes you wonder how all this would have gone down if the FBI agents didn't call him in to learn about Freon fingerprints. We never see much of the outside of this place, but I'm kind of wondering how Hoffman doesn't see Jill's car outside. Sure, she may have taken precautions to park far away from the building, but considering how little care she took for walking inside, I'm not ready to give her the benefit of the doubt. Okay, you can pull it. I love you. Trusting your kid to know better than you when there are vats of hydrofluoric acid that could spray down on you at any minute. Does it even work? Yeah, but to be on the safe side, maybe don't keep pulling the lever down toward die. Hoffman sees the letter Jill left for him, and instead of immediately looking for intruders, he decides to read the letter and have flashbacks and sh**. You were with Cecil the night Jill lost Gideon. So Hoffman was able to blackmail Amanda into killing Lynn Denlin just because she was with a dude who caused Jill's miscarriage? This feels like the movie is trying to forgive its own sin for making Amanda lose canon at the end of Saw 3. Hey, I can't get into Amanda's mindset. I don't know what she might or might not do under pressure. Just seems like she'd know John would take this information with a grain of salt. She already went through a test for her sins. Also, this brings me to the next question. Why is Hoffman writing a letter anyway? Why didn't he just get Amanda in private and tell her what he knew? Why leave a paper trail? Kill Lynn Denlin. Or I will tell John what you did. Also, also, this plot twist means that Hoffman knew something that John did not, and nothing in all the other movies would lead me to believe this is possible. <laughs> How is this plan going to work if Hoffman wasn't sitting in this chair right now? I'm gonna make it up to you, I promise. Are you really standing up your sister for work? I'm your only family. You mean the guy who denied John coverage also has a sister who's shot to fame reporting on the Jigsaw murders? How does John get so lucky? Also, this is a surprise for the audience, but not a very good one. It's not like the reveal that Pamela is William's sister changes the dynamic of the movie we've seen so far. It's a morsel of information that makes you go, oh. But it doesn't make you want to go back and watch it under new context. It's not like when you find out Bruce Willis is Kaiser Soze at the end of The Others. Also, also, earlier when the kid asked his mom why this was happening to them, she said, We're here because of your father. Why the f*** would she say that about her dead husband unless she was tricking a movie audience into thinking she meant William? Hello, Tara. My apologies for exposing you and your son to this kind of treatment. How was the video queued up to start? The timer had already run out. It's like it knew to wait for Tara and her son to make sure they got some son of a bitches in to William. The man before you just made the sacrifices to save the life of a loved one. Did he really make sacrifices, though? I'm not really even sure he needed to do any of the tasks, except for the very first one, where he held his breath longer than the janitor. He may have suffered a couple injuries, but I honestly don't think he needed to save anyone in this movie to get far. Besides, Jigsaw doesn't get to have his grand finale if William doesn't make it here. And there's no way he'd allow one of these people to fail before that happened. I can't. I can't kill him. 
It's almost hilarious how everyone looks so relieved when she doesn't pull the lever. When her son is right there, it looks like he's wanted to kill someone since he was eight. Okay, so what happens if William is on the other side next to his sister? The panel full of needles would completely miss him, as it only swings toward the other cage. Even if the panel swings down and hits him in the head on the other side, they don't get to inject the hydrofluoric acid into him. Hoffman is using his broken hand to unstrap the harness on his other hand, and that is some bullshit. Broken hand would be completely useless for this task. Oh sweet, there's a lucky window complete with bars so that Mark can stick his face in it and stop the trap from ripping his head wide open. I guess we'll get to see this asshole in the sequel after all. Don't trust. The one who saves you. So wait, is this little girl going to crack the Jigsaw case later? I haven't seen Saw 7 in forever, but how the f*** does this do anything? Even if this little girl told law enforcement about this, why would they give any credence to what Amanda told her? I think this is a director's cut thing, but whatever, here's your sin. Or, 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 being electrocuted. And that's it, Be being electrocuted. I, I was electrocuted once, it was horrible. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's episode. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get creative. Not only do you get to learn from the experts, but you can connect with other skill seekers on the platform who can support and encourage you on your journey. I personally recommend you check out the Creative Writing Bootcamp course. So what do you say? Take that free time and turn it into something worthwhile. Head to the link in the description and sign up. And if you're one of the first 1,000 folks to click the link, you'll get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And after that, it's only $10 a month. Why are you still here listening to me? There's clearly a better way to spend your time. Go click that link and sign up for Skillshare. I just woke up and I don't, don't revise. Don't tell me your kidney's gone. Hey, Chef, what does that stand for? Hydrofluoric acid. What are you, a f***ing geologist? <laughs> Goodbye, Lisa. Remember me as I am, filled with murderous rage. What do you want? What are you waiting for? Listen, David, I'm so gorgeous that most women hate me. That's all it takes, see? A bitch says one thing and it's all over! I drive a Dodge Stratus! When you're killing me, you- Miss Tuck, what's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs>